guys. Hi, my name is Daniel. I work for a company called DreamWalk, and uh, we developed this app, and we want to share it with you. We want to share our experiences and some stuff we learned along the way. And uh, let's start it. Okay, so I haven't done a presentation in a while, so I just start playing with the animations and stuff. A couple of new ones that are very cool. So, okay, uh, our app didn't want it to be a Me Too app because there are a lot of uh, apps out there that kind of does the same thing, but we want to differentiate ourselves from them. So we want to be in the business of generating content, we want to have sort of like a social network thing. Obviously, the app uh, what we're presenting to you is about music, so music is, uh, is the core element of it. So there are apps that are there that do transformation on your voice and stuff. There's social gaming, you know that? And then basically that's it, karaoke and heaps of them in the app store. So okay, these apps that are on the app store that probably some of you have downloaded in the past are just basically this. And uh, they offer this, they offer pre-recorded songs. Uh, what everything you do into it, you're always trying just to sound like somebody else and uh, try to sing a song by an artist that you're buying the track on those particular apps. Best case scenario, they give you loop bass, so they basically put a backing track onto your voice and stuff. And they have a poor UI, some of them. I mean, Songify is a major app. It has a bunch of downloads, and the UI is terrible, so I don't know, but people love it because of the functionality. <sighs> Yeah, I was trying every single different one and every single transition, so. Okay, so this is uh, Jam, and uh, this is what we're offering. We're offering creating uh, unique songs for everything you, you, you sing into it. Uh, we want the user to be in control of the app. We don't want you to be singing stuff to be transforming into someone else's song or something. We want you to create your own song, and we want to actually just try to make you sound the best possible. So you try to be the best you you can. Uh, we just put uh, a little bit of social integration so you can actually just talk and communicate with your friends and just uh, sort of like uh, bring more people into the game. Uh, the idea is actually just to, let's say, there are talent barriers because you, you cannot sing, not everyone can sing, but we're trying just to remove those barriers. Uh, we aim to be a musician and songwriter's tool. Uh, we'll see how we're going. I mean, I'll show you some stuff later on. And this is a little video we put uh, to promote the app. So, you want to be a rock star? You could take up singing lessons, find some musicians and form a band. <laughs> Rehearse every night. Or you could download Jam for iPhone and be rocking like a pro in seconds. Just pick a style and sing whatever you want. I want to jam with you every day. Jam or a jam or blues away. Jam will automatically turn it into a completely original musical masterpiece. I want to jam with you every day. Jam or a jam or blues away. You can share your song with friends on Facebook. Or publish it to the jam charts where the public can vote for it. And you can earn badges for your achievements. So that's basically what the app does, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of a demo. Okay, so this is basically the app. Uh, it has different screens and everything, tab bar, controller, you're quite familiar with them. And uh, basically, we have here the interface where you can actually sing into it and produce the song. So you can uh, choose different styles. Obviously, uh, the app actually comes with like two free styles. Thing once for free, and the other one you can get it by just sometimes. I mean, there's always just this, let's say two, and if you publish a song, you get one for free. There are a lot of them, but you can also get additional styles through in app purchases. But then different styles have different, I mean, conditions. So obviously, a pop ballad won't go as fast as the punk rock song and stuff. And uh, you basically sing into it, and uh, it will create the music around what, what you sing. So, okay, I'm trying to lay my uh, performance, but I'll show you some more bits of the app. So, like, like I said to you, we have some, some sort of a social network underpinning, and um, basically the way it works is that you publish your song, and you can publish it to some charts that we have in, in the app. So basically, uh, these are the, the top 100, so the songs that you should have published, and uh, they're there because they receive a lot of likes, they, there's a lot of people listening to them, and you can see, for example, this one, 
which is uh, I don't like it personally, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, okay. So this is one of the style packs called Dubstep. So she received like a thousand likes for the song, and uh, all the music that is that is. Uh, that you hear is actually creating originally for this particular track. So we have uh, an AI logic that actually just compose music around what, whatever they sang into it. So you can see. It. Well, okay, enough. And uh, yeah, but uh, so that's basically how, how it works. So every single time I publish a song. I can actually get fans, and people can actually start following me. And if I, when I publish a new track, I, all the people who are following me are going to be receiving a notification that I publish a track, and uh, they can listen to the song, and they can choose whether they like it or not, and they can actually favorite the song and just have a, like a playlist with all the, the music they like. And uh, that's basically how it works. So, because I, I have to sing now, and um, uh, I think I'll probably remove this thing. Uh, okay, the, the way the, the recording works is that we have an issue right now that is uh, we have the, the app that is for the iPhone, but somehow, I mean, there are a lot of iPad users, so they're actually downloading the, the app, and uh, somehow it doesn't behave like an iPhone. So the way we intended it to behave was just like, okay, you start recording it. Well, okay, first you, you set the style and, and stuff, and um, you st when you start recording, you have to put your phone next to your ear, but that looks all on an iPad. Plus, it's not possible because the, the, the microphone of the iPad and, and the speaker is not located in there, so it was pointless. So you can also just tap in here and just have a different interface for the iPad. But let's see if I can actually hear it. Okay, so I'll have to do it like, like that. So let's see, what, what can I sing? <laughs> I'm here at Coco Head singing a pop ballad. <laughs> I'm using jam for iPhone. <laughs> I don't know what else to sing, but please compose a good song. Thank you. Okay. Let's see if it helps me or not. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can actually put this thing back in here. So obviously, I mean, on some other tracks that they actually use their voice and they just put it in different uh, places around. But what we have in here is just a tool that you can actually do whatever thing you want. So if you want to give it, leave it in silence for a couple of uh, bars and then just go back in and uh, do whatever thing you wanted to do, just leave a, a long bridge or a long outro or something, it will just compose music for those kind of situations. So let's see. I'm not very good myself, but. I'm here at Coconut singing a pop ballad. I'm using them for life. I don't know what else to sing, but please support a good song. Thank you. <laughs> well, so it was pretty simple, but uh, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and obviously, it did a really good job because I'm terrible. <laughs> but some other people with a little bit of talent and uh, they keep trying everything, they come up with very good songs. They're actually just like, actually real songs and uh, build around topics like this one. So, I mean, we aim to have some sort of a platform for messaging so you can actually, uh, yeah, that's our app. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that uh, because uh, obviously the silent switch doesn't work on first launch. <laughs> For some reason, the notifications. So, uh, okay, the, the notification we were receiving for this kind of situation didn't trigger when they were in silent mode. Uh, the video, the the media player controller that actually plays the intro. And, uh, the app has an intro of a video or something. When they're on silent, those notifications are never fired when the video finishes. And we needed those notifications to actually just do some work. So we had to actually disable, and I didn't know it was possible to over override the silent switch. But apparently, it's just like a big bug, but it isn't there. So that's the reason why you couldn't actually just uh, use your silent switch. Okay, so people with. I miss you, Rebecca. Over the sea. 
So that's, that's basically the idea, so people can actually use it for that. Currently as it is, there are people using it for this, which was the, I mean, what we believe people are gonna be using it most of the time, but apparently people like to sing songs and covers and stuff. So they have their own renditions of famous songs and everything, and they're actually quite good. So, okay, so now the, the stuff that I, I want to share with you. How do we build this app? So the challenge was to create original music. We just uh, do develop an, an engine that actually just understands music and uh, try to understand and guess what the user was trying to do, what the user is actually really uh, trying to sing, and just try to build song and compose song uh, around that vocal track. So we don't want to just create music and just put the right notes and stuff. We got, want to create good music, and for this we actually just uh, Get, uh, got some help from uh, a couple of friends who are actually just involved in this project since the very beginning and they actually were very talented musicians so they have been actually teaching the engine uh, music. Uh, the challenge is actually for us to introduce Jam to us, uh, as many people as we can because uh, really, I mean, differentiate ourselves is actually a really hard thing to do but we believe the product is actually smart enough and cool enough to actually just do it by itself but we can, you have to give it a hand. So we're using basically word of mouth at this stage because uh, you will see the network fade that we ha have people sharing on Facebook and someone listening to it like, okay, this is how it works. But we also just uh, use some, some marketing, which is some stuff I want to talk about. So, oh, okay, and the challenge is actually to establish this as a platform. Like, as I was saying, I mean, it will be cool if every time you want to send someone a message that is actually, well, out of the usual stuff, you say, oh, okay, bring the milk or something, uh, you should actually send a song. And if you have that ability, well, you can use it. So that will be a, a good thing to do. And uh, that's why we have these uh, social underpinnings around the, the app that actually allows you to follow people, to publish it to Facebook, to publish it to uh, Twitter, and uh, even email the song if, if you want to send a personal message or something. And uh, the real challenge is actually keep users engaged because, I mean, novelty will actually fail away. So, like, okay, it was very cool the first time, second time. And the cool thing is that it actually just have a good replay value because every single time it's going to be generating a, a new one. It's going to be different in a way. If you sang something that is completely different, it's going to be a completely different song. So that's a, that's a good thing. But we are just doing a, a lot of stuff to actually keep the content fresh. There is a, the, the guy who does the web and something is just going crazy, coming up with good algorithms that actually just... Uh, favorite uh, fresh content, but also put some uh, value on likes and stuff. It's, it's very complicated, and that's why uh, websites like Reddit and stuff are actually very successful, just because they have a good algorithm to actually put uh, some value and good content. They keep showing it to you, but it has to go away because there are news or something. So it's complicated, but uh, there's a guy working on that. And there's also this gaming narrative. I mean, the app, as you see, are a bunch of styles and, and uh, you can earn points for every like you receive from a person, and those points you can actually convert them into buying another style. If you publish a song and it reaches the, the top 100 chart, you get, you get some royalties for that. Uh, uh, there's a whole game mechanic built around that to actually, with the only objective of actually keep people engaged and just keep people coming back to the app and making them actually produce songs because that's what we want. Okay, so this is uh, how the apps, yeah. What the app has achieved over the last uh, two weeks or something. It's been the number one musical app in 26 countries, which is very good. Uh, it's currently featuring the new and noteworthy and what's hot charts here in many countries around. I think right now we're actually featuring in, Aust in Australia. Uh, two weeks ago, we reached the number seven overall in, in the US for a couple of days, but uh, that's actually just not the case anymore. But we're actually, I mean, that's part of the, not a part of the presentation I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, we have a quarter of a million users right now. Uh, we were featured on TV and radio in the US. We have uh, over uh, 21,000 songs uh, published. So obviously there are more songs that, that are being created because some people decide not to share their talent with the world. And uh, over a million of, of playbacks in the, in the website and the app. We don't have access to the metric from Facebook. Uh, and we were just uh, called the app of the day at Malware a couple of uh, days ago. And uh, okay, so this is how we're doing. This is uh, one of the things we want to share with you. So the knowledge we managed to actually uh, build around this thing. So this is the, the marketing strategies we use for this app. Uh, we use app guide apps, those apps that actually recommend another apps and uh, app of the day, app gratis and stuff. Uh, it went very good, but some are actually better than others and some actually charge more and stuff. Uh, in our personal experience actually, uh, 
I'm not in charge of marketing, but uh, from what I, I heard and what I see, there are a company called App Gratis. Which, uh, did a very very good job for, good, good job for us because uh, yeah, it brings a lot of users. I mean, obviously you had to pay, but it was. I mean, for this particular case, out of all the, the ones we tried, it was completely worth it. Uh, app reviews. That at first, before actually launching, we sent some promo codes for people to review it and stuff, and so they charge money and stuff. Uh, I think some of them were quite good, but it's hard to actually just uh, decide which ones were affecting the users because there is no connection on the downloads you receive to the. I mean, you can probably link it sometimes when the, uh, you publish a review and you get suddenly a, a peak in, in the app downloads, but it's hard to tell whether it, if not it was coming from there or from other marketing stuff you're doing. The App Store features, they're very good, but we thought it was going to be just like a massive thing, but apparently it's not. I mean, we I think we're on the front page of the App Store right now, but we're not seeing just many downloads of actually coming from there these days. Uh, the real thing is actually the network effect. I think that that's what's worked best for us. It's just like if you download it and you publish a song and someone else downloaded it and just they log into the app, they connect their Facebook account to actually just open the account, they to like it on Facebook, that actually has worked great for us. And the other one is traditional media. I think along with the app guides uh, we, we paid and the network effect, effect, traditional media has actually been very good for us because it's very hard to find. You can actually pay, the, uh, uh, well, maybe you can, uh, uh, a news reporter to actually come to you and do some sort of stuff. But when you start just get this thing going and then suddenly someone calls, and, oh, look at this, this is what they're doing. And you're being featured. I mean, we'll, you'll see a huge peak of downloads. Uh, and basically, uh, what we've been doing is just trying to build a brand around the platform. Just you see the monkeys and stuff, and you see them. Oh, you probably didn't see it when it was producing the song, but you can see the monkeys just playing the instruments and stuff, and it's it's very very cool. And uh, just pulling this kind of stunts or something to actually just put some branding on, on the product. So uh, we have a real monkey in uh, <laughs> in there. Just uh, see, so it was very fun. And okay, now. That's, that's uh, about marketing. That's uh, obviously uh, I'm not the most qualified person to talk about marketing because I was basically barely in touch with that kind of uh, stuff. But that's what I heard, and, and that's what I, I figured you should. Pro I, I mean, be interested in listening to. Uh, okay. Now, in regards to iOS, uh, something we learned. Obviously, it deals with a lot of audio, and uh, we learned the hard way that there are a lot. I mean, yeah, fragmentation is not quite an issue for iOS. Yet there are many different devices out there, and there are subtle differences in, uh, in their hardware and their software and stuff that obviously you never notice. But in terms of audio, the codex thing is a nightmare because on some uh, devices that have dual core, they have uh, certain codes that were available, but in some other ones, apparently they're available and you, and you can actually call them and, and stuff. But once you start actually recording using them, they don't work at all, and your app crashes badly, and you don't know why. Codex is, is a nightmare. Something you can actually say that whether or not you use hardware acceleration. Sometimes you can, some other times you can't, depending on the device. So we have a huge long list of conditional saying, oh, if it's the iPad, use this one, and if it's the iPad 2, that is, uh, it's endless. Uh, oh, another thing we actually learned uh, in is Facebook. Uh, we connected with Facebook and, and we rely on, on it for our uh, sign up process. It's not entirely popular. We thought it was going to be okay, we're just doing a Facebook, but apparently, a lot of feedback is that people don't want to share their personal information. They're more aware of that and privacy issues. They say, oh, I don't want uh, this company to have all my personal details or something. Or, we're not stealing their personal details, but we want to use Facebook to create a new account. That's an issue with users. But also, there's an issue with the Facebook SDK. Uh, we had a hard, hard time just making it work as we wanted to. We have a lot of issues with grinding and uh, asking for permissions on, on, the, on the framework just to grind, to post, to read, and stuff. On iOS 6, considering that now there is a native integration, I mean, we have issues because sometimes you actually dismiss something and you just like save, and you never got an, a chance to actually ask for it again. And people started just writing on the reviews, oh, I cannot connect to Facebook. It's because they disable it, and there's no way f for us to know whether or not what was happening. So that thing about the SDK and the iOS 6 integration, just to keep it in sync and stuff, that's sort of uh, complicated, and the permissions is just Oh, okay, that's terrible. And the error report that we got from Facebook are just generically completely. We don't know what's happening. I mean, we just got a oh, error not minus five. But it could be anything. It could be read permissions. It could be anything, anything at all on their accounts. They, they decline the request, a lot of stuff. So we, 
uh, we figured that, I mean, if you're going to get into this kind of stuff, I mean, you better be aware of this. Uh, the other thing we were thinking about is uh, Android development. I actually did most of the, of the work for the audio engine and uh, the logic behind it. But we don't know how that's going to be. And uh, obviously, we've been researching and stuff, and we've just been looking at, of, for what we, we've been told, the audio framework on Android is not as powerful as the one on iOS. So that's an issue, and people are actually relying on third parties. And uh, we, we saw that there was a, a lecture on the FMOD a, a couple of uh, months ago. We were like, oh, probably we should start learning about that and see how we can actually use that to achieve the same sort of thing we achieve on iOS. So, and then uh, we also learned about this, this sort of things the hard way. We, uh, we had a sort of an incident, and uh, it just went like this. We just push an update because uh, Obviously, the, the app being out there, we got a lot of crash reports on this time while it was failing and stuff. And so we start fixing all this Facebook, uh, all this, uh, Facebook stuff and, and the box and stuff. But uh, we requested a, an expedited update, and then uh, it was approved. So we were very happy because it just took like a day. But unfortunately, I wasn't aware of something I was doing. And, and of course, that bad practice, but I, was, I wasn't aware of that. And we, I learned it the, the hard way. Uh, I was actually storing absolute URLs and then the core data thing. And I wasn't aware of the fact that every single time you update your app or an update has, has been done, your home directory might change. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it changes. So all the URLs you have stored are just pointing to nowhere. So um, worse than that, and that's, uh, I mean, a huge issue, is that for some reason uh, we were using uh, the NS directory enumerator. Sometimes we were using file manager on some more parts of the app. But somehow, sometimes the URL they return, they don't match, although they're pointing to the same uh, file. Because uh, they the append is a private thing. And uh, apparently, it's because iOS resolves uh, symbolic links differently. And there are some methods in NS string and NS URL that you can actually use to get around that. Because, like, oh, uh, abbreviate this string with, uh, with the tilde or expanding this uh, uh, path uh, that has the tilde. But the issue with that is, and we have to build our, our own classes of that, is because the way they work, I thought it were going to be very smart or something, but the way they work, they actually just compare yourself against the NS home directory. But if the home directory changes, you might pass a, a valid a path, but you're going to say, well, I cannot uh, expand it or just uh, abbreviate it, because they don't understand about, about that thing. So they basically compare the string of the home directory, and that's how they abbreviate and uh, expand it. So learn it the hard way, because uh, the day we push the update, we have like 60,000 downloads. And every single one of those devices basically was basically deleting all of the files inside the app. And people were crashing all the time because there were no files there. So review saying, oh, this app is crashing all the time. Crap, crap. In fact, it's, it's uh, our best release so far. It hasn't had any bugs or anything. But the people who were updating to it, nightmare. It wasn't going to work at all because we basically destroyed all the files. No files were able to play or any, do anything. So that's it. And the other thing is the accelerated framework. Uh, we managed to actually improve the performance of the app. I recommend it to you guys to have a look. Sometimes you cannot, uh, you can use it even for stuff that are not, is not entirely audio related, because the way it works, you can actually vectorize all the your operations for very expensive for loops that you do to do operational stuff. So you, if you manage to actually create a good data structure, you can actually vectorize it, apply these frameworks, and then just get it back again. It's ultra fast and. Uh, it helped our app just to achieve a moderate level of performance uh, by using this. OK. So I don't know if you have any questions about the app or? Um, is the new generation on at the end? So will you sing the song that's uh, what do you mean? Oh, what, what I was listening to. Uh, basically, what, what I was listening to was a metronome, just a, a cue saying, OK. Because you can give it a cue to the app saying, oh, there's a, a tap for tempo there. You can actually say, oh, I want to sing this fast, or uh, you, you have a slider or something. But basically, what, what I was listening to was just like a, to, to a metronome just give, giving me a, a guide so I can, I can actually sync on time. We would think about just probably putting a reference note or stuff, but uh, I think it was just more intuitive for let people actually sing whatever thing they want and try to accommodate around that. I'm curious to the size of your team and what specialties were. Well, initially the, our team is just uh, probably in the main development two people. And uh, but then uh, we have uh, our CFO and CEO. They're actually very talented musicians and they were all just uh, involved in the whole process because, I mean, there's a lot of music knowledge to it. 
and uh, and they basically just had the, their vision and stuff. So you can just say four people, but then at the very end we have a team of probably seven people just working on different stuff at the, at the very end. But for six months, for the most part of six months, it was just three people, three, three to four people. And two musicians, the guy who does the web end, which is uh, a genius. I mean, I think that's sort of like a black box to me. It connects to the API, and I don't know what's happening in there. Uh, I just finished the song and said, well, the song is done. I don't know what you want to do with it. It's just uploaded. Uh, there's a lot of integration to actually put the, the files in a server that actually ha has a, a huge capacity because there is a streaming. All. I mean, like I said to you, I was playing more than one million times on, uh, of playbacks and stuff, so I cannot host that kind of server just easily. Where do you host it? Uh, I think we're hosting Amazon S3. Well, uh, to, to be honest, I mean, uh, there was also a t time of change for the company. So uh, when, the co when the app was uh, in the very early stage of development, the company was different. But at the very uh, late stage, uh, there were lawyers and stuff involved. So when the first time you actually log into the app, you have to agree to some terms and conditions. So the way it works, because uh, I mean, we want to be very fair and open about that, is that people retain their uh, ownership of the vocal track that they provide to us but the, the app retains the uh, ownership of the music provided to us, so no one can does, uh, do a thing without the other. So if we manage to actually, I mean, there are some very, I mean, very good songs in here, and if they manage to actually just make it to a radio or something, well, I mean, that would be a good, the best publicity we can ever have, so we won't be mad at, at them. So. Well, uh, well, the the AI just uh, um, is being trained to, uh, to actually understand a lot of stuff, a lot of features. So it's uh, a lot in, uh, well. To, to be honest, I mean, some some people might agree that it is. So yeah, I mean, but it's it's obviously understanding a, a lot of different features from, from the voice and trying just to actually just put it, put them in context. And like I said to you, most of the of the stuff that actually makes the app great in terms of the of the competitors is that it produces good music, and it's because the music, uh, the knowledge of musicians built around that have actually made that possible. So, yeah, I mean, it depends, it changes every single time. How did you get started? Was it just the process of building your AI, seeing something into it, getting used to musicians, and then tweaking it, or basically static Well, it, endless iterations. I mean, it's been like that. It's been like, uh, uh, we found this weird case where it doesn't do as, uh, is it is expected, how do we do? Obviously, the idea is just to keep getting knowledge and just try to make it better every day. And that will be the idea, but then you'll end up just on some sort of issue collecting people's information and stuff. So we're only just publishing the songs and that's it. Cool. That's that's